Hey guys, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. And we are back with another mystery box. Now, we've been talking about the fact that the weather has been changing, and we've been changing with it from the summer of Spidey to the fall of the mutants. And we're going to be looking at more X-Men figures in this mystery box because I want to do some X-Men history lessons and go through and do some recreations of some classic X-Men art using action figures. But to do that, we got to get through all the different X-Men figures so we know where everybody is. Now, it's been a big week at Carbon Scoring, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it. First of all, we hit 1 million views earlier this week, so can't say enough to say thank you to everybody who's been watching the channel, supporting it, and following it over this past year. Just really proud of, of the community that we've developed. But the other big news is... Look who has come to play. Yes, there he is in all of his glory. The HasLab Sentinel is here. And man, this thing is just a monster. Hopefully for those of you who ordered one, yours has come in. I was super excited. Mine actually came two days ago. Uh, is just such a neat, huge mammoth figure. I have not figured out how we're going to display this thing because of space constraints. You know, we're just going to have to figure it out. But to give you an idea, here is a six-inch action figure right next to the HasLab Sentinel. I mean, it is just huge. So, takes both hands. Got to lift this guy out of the way. Oh, so there we go. So... Big time for the X-Men here at Carbon Scoring. Super excited about it. So let's go ahead and dig into this box and see what we can find. And, you know, the very first thing was the figure that we pulled out a minute ago. This is Angel from the all-new X-Men uh, five-piece box set that had the original X-Men in it. Uh, I can't remember if we found his wings in the last box or if they're going to be down in this box, but we'll see him here in just a second. So got this guy, Angel. Uh, I, I think I had originally thought that these were supposed to be the original 1960s X-Men. I think it's really more that they're the kind of 2000s revival where Brian Michael Bendis brought the original X-Men up towards the future, which makes a little bit more sense. And, and I can be maybe not quite as critical uh, on them uh, because of that. But let's dig in and see what we've got. So first off, one of the things that we're going to do with our X-Men history series as we get to it going through the rest of the fall is we're going to take classic X-Men storylines and go through the comics history of them and then show you the action figures that belong with them. So this is a bag that is organized with Age of Apocalypse figures. You know, you have the absolutely incredible uh, Sunspot, Sunspot, Sunfire, doesn't matter, this figure is so good. Now, we actually got one of these before as like a, a Toy Fair exclusive or, or something like that. But this is a really nice figure. I love the translucent plastic, the black that they did, that head sculpt with the rising sun on the mask. So good. And, of course, you've got Wild Child and Wolverine. Very, very nice Wolverine. He's got his stump with his claws coming out. Now, we did see some of these figures from the Toy Biz days, and maybe we'll run into them in this box. If we do, that'll be great. But these are the newer Hasbro versions of the Age of Apocalypse figures. And a couple of more in here. We have Jean Grey. Of course, there's another set that is about to be coming out. Some people have actually already received their Legion figure. I have not. And then Grey Beast. Now, they used, you know, kind of reused some parts here. Obviously used the chest from the previous beast, but look at this brand new head sculpt with those braids, the detail, the earrings, really, really nice. So this is going to be a great set and is going to allow us to really dig into that storyline when we get to it. Here's some more silliness from the land of Deadpool. I actually don't, haven't read the comic that this is from, but here we have a besuited in his Miami Vice looking white suit Deadpool with our boy Hitmonkey rolling with him. Sadly, I apparently bought two of these and so I've got a whole baggie full of dead Deadpool Hitmonkey sets here. But let's get into some of the good stuff. Let's get into some of the heart 
of the X-Men. And I think this box is really going to go across the span of time of my X-Men collection from some early Toy Biz figures all the way through to, obviously, some relatively uh, newer ones. Here is Professor Xavier's hover chair. So I kind of, because when I started reading X-Men comics, Professor X was in a wheelchair. And so that's sort of how I tend to have him in my display where he's down in what I refer to as my secret lounge where I display the best of the best of my collection. Professor X is in the wheelchair down there. But I think I used the figure from the hover chair uh, in that. So we'll check that out when we look at the main X-Men display. But pretty awesome hover chair that, that came with a, a stand for everything. Now, here we go. The leader of the X-Men, going back to the very earliest days, Scott Summers, Cyclops. We have gotten several of this figure. The first one that Toy Biz did was on like a wrestler body, and so he's way too big through the upper chest. This is much more consistent with my favorite era of the X-Men, the John Byrne, Chris Claremont era, where Scott was thin, but certainly muscular. This also would fit well in a, in a uh, Jim Lee collection, but we're going to see a Jim Lee Cyclops, I'm sure, at some point. He's got the cool fingers to reach up and hit his optic blast. And he's got a nice paint wash so that this, this thing's not just flat yellow and blue. It really kind of brings out the musculature of the sculpt because of that uh, paint wash on it. Good stuff. Ah, yes, one of my absolute favorite characters in the history of the X-Men, Kitty Pride, And this Kitty came from the Astonishing X-Men comic series from uh, Joss Whedon and John Cassidy. And actually, we got all of the main X-Men in their Astonishing X-Men uniforms, uh, and we got their main bad guy, Danger, uh, who was in the last... X-Men Mystery Box, if you guys want to check that out. So that is going to be one of the chapters of X-Men history that we're going to be able to delve into because we have a complete set of action figures that represents that time frame. Here is the newest release from Hasbro of Nightcrawler. Love this figure. I wish that his tail were a little bit more form bendy the way that the original Toy Biz one was. I actually still very, very much love that original Toy Biz Nightcrawler, and it still has the place of honor down in my X-Men display. But this one's really great, and with the upcoming Excalibur box set with an Excalibur Shadow Cat, Captain Britain, and uh, Megan, we're going to be able to use this guy with that. So looking forward to him being a part of the Excalibur display. Now we're reaching back into the past. Here is a Toy Biz Cable. I believe this was Toy Biz's first attempt at Nathaniel Summers Cable. Very cool. Love the classic X-Men blue and yellow. Um, not sure if we can catch a date on when this one was, but I'm betting, I think it maybe it's right there, 2004. So definitely one of the earlier uh, figures in the Toy Biz Marvel Legends run. Great, great work on that bionic arm. He's got some veins popping out of this arm. Really strong head sculpt. Very nice. Got, you know, the difference between the two eyes. That eye has the glowing eye. And he's not like fully uh, Rob Liefeld. Uh, have like a gazillion pouches and pockets on him, but clearly, clearly from that 90s kind of feel of the X-Men. Great figure. Then come back closer to the present with Cannonball. This is the oh-so-controversial legless Cannonball. Comes with his flying effects, and it's a nice uh, top body. Uh, I'm glad that Hasbro's made the decision to give us this Cannonball with legs so that we can you know, pose him in some different ways. Because of that, I still have the uh, old original Cannonball figure down on display with my with my X Force figures. But still, nice stuff. Here we go. You can't do an X Men series without the bad guys, and there is probably no one badder than Sabretooth. Now, this is a really really solid Sabretooth because it's on a good huge buck, but not like a Hulk sized buck. So you can still imagine this big figure fighting Wolverine and it gives him, you know, the heft and the size over Wolverine 
without being just comically big, you know, where it's on like one of those massive venom bodies. So good combination of sculpt and, and size for that one. Looks like uh, could be Jean, but we'll hang on to her. And there's a juggernaut hand. Here is Mr. Sinister. Another really, really nice figure from Hasbro. You can see, obviously, Mr. Sinister is all about the cape, and they crushed it. You know, not only does the cape, you know, have the, the broken cords coming down, but they have them where they're layered. It's not just coming down flat. They actually create some texture back here. You can see that some of them are overlapping and stuck together and whatnot. Also, really nice job with the metallic paint scheme so that he has that, that future armored kind of look and just that head sculpt with that with that sinister sneer those carved out cheekbones solid solid action figure good stuff going back in time this was one of our earlier versions of uh, Warpath or Thunderbird or whichever way you want to use him a little bit big you know this is on that that massive massive body with the huge shoulders uh, again not sure when this one came out. Uh, I do like the newer one better, and that's the one that I've been using. Now we're talking, though. I believe that this Colossus is the one that came in the Juggernaut 2-pack, and it is just a, a truly, truly spectacular figure. Again, look at Peter's head sculpt there. Really brings out that metallic, and he has the, you know, the classic Colossus costume. I love these grippy hands. You know, we don't always need punching hands for every one of these figures. Sometimes having them in more of a, a neutral or a gripping stance really works out so, so well. So good. Yeah, so back and forth, new to old, new to old. So here is an older figure with Forge. Kind of has his X-Men team uniform. Yeah, he's one of the few X-Men that sort of has maintained that kind of X-Men team look from... Uh, when the X-Men went out to battle the Shi'ar out in space and they were all kind of wearing the, the yellow and blue kind of Neo uh, original costume team uniforms. But it really works for, for Forge. And he's such an interesting character how you're able to bring his kind of tech wizard, wizardry to the fore, even though he may not necessarily be the most physically imposing mutant. You know, his brain is what really makes him such a vital member of the team and of everything moving forward. All right, uh-oh. Looks like Juggernaut's seen some better days there. All right, we've got the son of Wolverine, Dokken. You can see he's got his nicely done tattoos. He has uh, bone claws, the two bone claws here. This is off one of our typical uh, you know, Wolverine bodies, but I'm a huge fan of having the, the hood open back there. And just look at how great they did with this mohawk. Really, really nice figure. Interesting character, not one that's necessarily one of my favorites, but I'm glad that they gave it to us in, in plastic form. There's a Boom Boom Head and Nightcrawler's extra faces. Good. Glad I didn't lose those. That's a good thing. Now we're talking. Here we're going back to the early 2000s and Toy Biz's first attempt at Rogue. Now, with, with those cheeks... Uh, painted like that, you might could call her uh, Rouge, uh, but we'll go with Rogue. She has the unfortunate Toy Biz uh, neck for female figures, but she does come with this sweet X-Men leather jacket. She was in uh, a box set and was really kind of hard to find even back in the day, and I think it's become a fairly sought-after figure uh, since that time. Weird, weird articulation at the lower body and the hips. I mean, not really sure what anatomically that's supposed to do. But for a very, very long time, this was the only rogue figure that we had for our displays. And man, I still love it. It's still a great figure. It's just, it's been eclipsed by some of the newer Hasbro ones. Here we go. Here's where Jim Lee comes into play with a very thin Cyclops. So again, I kind of like my Cyclops slim. I mean, that's what he's supposed to be. You hear Wolverine call him that fairly frequently in the books. And, you know, this this body frame really kind of masters that. It also has the nice uh, swivel right there at the, the lats, which allows him to get up to that optic blasting look. You know, again, this is one where, where Hasbro has kind of come, come through and really surpassed what Toy Biz did originally, but there's absolutely nothing wrong 
with this original Jim Lee figure of Cyclops. Good stuff. Hope Summers. Uh, wow, that's a complicated history and one that I probably need to go back and read before I try to spout off what all is happening with this character. But uh, this is, I don't know, daughter of Cyclops somehow. Can't remember if this is like Madeline Pryor's daughter or if she has something to do with Jean. It's just super confusing. But a nice figure nonetheless. Really, really, you know, attractive female head sculpt. So nicely done as far as that goes. All right, again... You're only as good as your bad guys, and let me tell you, when you start talking about Gladiator, we are talking about some pretty massive, massive bad guys. So Gladiator is the the uh, head of the Shi'ar Imperial Guard, famous from such comic stories that you right, might remember as the Dark Phoenix Saga. Uh, would love to get more Imperial Guard figures. He's a little bit lonely all by himself as, you know, kind of the only one out there. But still, if you're only going to have one, this is the one to have. You know, he can also kind of sneak into your Fantastic Four display because he certainly has had some storylines uh, with them as well, particularly, again, during that John Byrne run on FF. But really, really solid Gladiator figure. All right, we may be venturing into the, uh, the Deadpool section of, of the, the box here. Y'all have to forgive me. I forgot... Uh, what this guy's name is. I know he comes with the hat, and this was like an alternate Deadpool body. I do love the original X-Men logo on his chest, and that's a fun figure. I just got to figure out what I'm going to do with him. Speaking of fun figures, no one else can get away with wearing the heart boxers, the Deadpool heart boxers, and the little uh, slippers with his Horrible, horrible, disfigured legs. You can see the musculature kind of coming through there. Um, got his pinky up because he's fancy. Anytime you're walking around in your boxers, you want to be fancy. But, you know, it's crazy Deadpool. And let's just grab some more Deadpools while we're at it. This is a more uh, kind of classic Deadpool. Again, has that great sort of finger articulation. This one almost has like a shocked look under the mask. If you can see kind of how his mouth appears to be sculpted wide open. That's pretty impressive. Uh, good stuff with that. And Lady Deadpool. So she actually first appeared as a Marvel Select figure, but this is a Marvel Legends and is really nice. Much more, much more in scale. Nice job with that flowing ponytail. Like really nice job with that. And I like the flat red paint on this one. So world of Deadpool. Let's drop back to some of our earlier Toy Biz figures with one that I've always really enjoyed, and that's Gambit. So great, great head sculpt of everybody's favorite cage, and you can see that little tiny smirk. You can see the the hair swooping around. He's got his his uh, trench coat on, and you know it's hard to know. Do, do you prefer the the plastic trench coats that then really limit the articulation, or do you prefer the soft good trench coats that don't always hold their shape quite as well? It's tough, you know, I, I, it, it's difficult to find, like, the perfect balance between the two, but I'm definitely happy with what they did with that figure, for sure. And here is what I believe will be our final member of that original X-Men box set with Beast. And pretty nice Beast, actually. We have not gotten enough Beast in his more human form. We have gotten so many blue furry Beast, which is great, we need them, there's another one right down there that we're going to look at in a second. But we could use some more, you know, human beast so that we can recreate some of the earliest issues of X-Men, some of those early issues of X-Factor when uh, Beast was back in his human form. Uh, Brown is not typically a costume that tends to sell a lot of action figures, but I could definitely go for that Brown X-Factor Beast to kind of complete the look of that set. That would be really good. We've gotten the Cyclops, I'd love to see some more X-Factor figures from that. All right, out with the new, in with the old. Here's the original Toy Biz Psylocke. Not so bad, not so bad at all. We have an Onslaught figure here with the red skull head. Hopefully I've got kind of the rest of, the rest of that somewhere. It's kind of like a giant beetle, I think, with that big back on him. Oh, my, oh, my. 
you know, it's a family channel. You know, what are we supposed to do with Emma Frost? And particularly, look at how wonky these legs have become. I mean, this is obviously not a figure that has been displayed in my display. But, I mean, even if I wanted to, how's she going to stand up with legs that look like that? That's, that's awful. And while we're talking about awful Emma Frost, here is an earlier version in her diamond form. I want to say this was a Toys R Us exclusive. Rest in peace, Toys R Us. But, um, you know, again, really terrible uh, articulation. This was when we were still kind of trying to figure out how do you make action figures of women? And we kind of hadn't gotten it, but at least that's, you know, at least she's kind of got the glass diamond look. That, again, goes with that Weed and Cassidy uh, Astonishing X-Men display. All right, we'll save you for a minute. Here is the newer Beast. This is the Hasbro recently released Beast figure. It's beautiful. Great blue color, really looks exactly like Jim Lee drew him in the early 90s. You know, that book sold 8 million issues of its first copy, but there's still something so special about that very first Toy Biz Beast that it's the one that's down in my display. So here in this box, you've got like the new Nightcrawler and the new Beast because they didn't supplant the Toy Biz versions down in my main X-Men display. Oh, here's the professor. So this is the one that went with the wheelchair. Solid. Well done. Very, very nice. Oh, how great is it that they gave us a disco dazzler figure with the roller skates? I mean, it even has the little brakes on them. I mean, it's got like the the uh, the little coping and 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 all the bushings and whatnot sculpted in to those those roller skates. She's got her 70s disco ball hanging from her neck, open top, straight out of the disco. Phenomenal. Look at look at that Farrah Fawcett hair kind of flopping out to the side. Listen, I'm not sure who sculpted this figure, but whoever you are, way to go. This captures a moment so incredibly well. I mean, you could have phoned in that hair and just reused some different hair, but no, that is just straight off of that Farrah Fawcett poster, just Charlie's Angels hairstyle. Unbelievable. Absolutely love this figure. And again, this is the potential of Marvel Legends. This is, when you make a Disco Dazzler, anything is possible. Love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, let's grab these two sisters. So... From the land of Toy Biz, here we have Phoenix and Dark Phoenix. Again, they're both really nice. I mean, they're, they're very, very well done. Really great paint sculpts. You can see that there is a difference between the Phoenix logos on the two of them. And there's a... I, nah, man, maybe that hair sculpt is basically, basically the same on both. But it's remarkable how whiting out those eyes, like happened with Dark Phoenix, can really make such a a big difference in the look of this of this character but you know they actually gave us this is pretty soft soft rubber there on both of them so it kind of hangs nicely again we've been blessed with more versions of this pivotal piece of x-men history but those two are still really super nice let's knock out oh here's a fool killer right isn't his name fool killer where did my main man go it comes back to me eventually there he is with his cap, with his chapeau, looking oh so stylish. Yeah, now we're kind of, again, getting into the land of Deadpool. So here is uh, another Deadpool similar to that first one. I think this one looks like it's a little bit older because it clearly was down in my secret lounge. It's got a little bit of the, the mold on it from being down there. But sweet figure, very, very nice. And then here is a newer version, a little bit shinier, a little bit of a newer Body frame, still kicking the pinky, which is always good. Got some grenades on the side. Solid, solid Deadpool. And this one, yeah. This is the original Toy Biz Deadpool. So this is the 2004 version. And you can see, I mean, he's got kind of those wonky early Toy Biz shoulders, but he came with, you know, multiple swords. And of course, this is the Deadpool that was packed in with dupe. 
So your only chance to get a member of the Ecstatics, Dupe, came with this Deadpool. Now, clearly, you know, we've made some strides as far as sculpting goes, but for 2004 to bring this figure out, really, really nice. I mean, all the little details on his, on his pouch and on his belt. Like I said, he's got the, he's got the swords. Super great early, early Marvel Legends. And, you know, because, I mean, you can't sell too many of the guy. There he is. All right. Let's see what we have down here in the bottom of our box. There's Juggernaut's very, very handsome uh, face. Ugh. Here is a newer Jean Grey, but I don't think this is the newest one. I don't think. Seems like seems like the newer one had the ponytail. I think this is kind of the, the midpoint Marvel Girl, Jim Lee, Jean Grey. Yeah, old lady Deathstrike. Uh, we did get a newer one of this just recently in the, uh, in the Villains Wave, um, but still pretty cool Toy Biz busted that out back in the day. Here is Toy Biz's first... Colossus figure. Mm, you know, the newer one may be a little bit more comic accurate, but boy, that is a beast of a figure. I mean, just the the size. I love that he's got this shoulder articulation where you can really get his arms out to the side, just make him a huge figure. And look at how stern and metallic that head is. So nice. So, so, so nice. Iceman. That's a good kind of generic, newer Iceman. Hang on to him. We'll use him a lot. Mystique, the original Toy Biz Mystique. Not a bad figure in and of itself. We got Jubilee, Miss Jubilation Lee. Uh, this, um, I think maybe this was the Build-A-Figure Jubilee. So that was actually a really hard-to-find wave with this that, that created this build a figure i think it was originally um going to be like a shared exclusive uh and then ended up only at toys r us and then the distribution was like incredibly low so it was really hard to put it together this was the wave that i believe had strife the main x-force bad guy in it uh and then it, it also did not have this deadpool dog but it did have this storm who before we got our newer punk mohawk storm this was one of my absolute favorite storms because it really kind of combines her goddess look with the way that she has the flowing cape off the back with that 80s punk rock head sculpt i mean just such a terrific terrific uh figure and i'm really fortunate to have been able to find this back back when it came out because like i said i think it had an incredibly low distribution run. So very, very good stuff. Well, hey, it's it's the fall of the mutants. If you love these videos, you're really going to love this video. So don't be afraid to go ahead and jump right on that now and check it out. But keep coming back to Carbon Scoring for more and more mutant action as we go forward. Thanks, guys.